Divine Truth Assistance Group. These group assistance sessions are about putting principles of divine truth into action. This discussion is part of the 2014 Australia Group 1 series. The topic is Pray for God's Love, presented by Jesus on the 19th of July 2014 in Monkeray, New South Wales, Australia. Okay. Well, we come to our last little bit of things that we can communicate with you for the, for the, for the moment. And uh, I'm left with the task of trying to describe to you the greatest gift you're ever going to receive. Right? Well, not so much trying to describe to you the greatest gift you're ever going to receive, but rather your what's going to be needed from you in order to receive it. Right? So as Mary eloquently pointed out in her talk, we've been given these two gifts. The first gift you already have. That gift had to be given to you to make you the free-thinking, free-feeling free being that you are becoming. And for the majority of us, we've not even understood that gift, have we? Right? And you can see that what we've been trying to teach you over the last few days, last eight days, is trying to help you engage that gift, that gift of will that you have in this process of becoming a person who wants to love. But to be frank with you, the fastest way you're ever going to become loving is by receiving some of God's love. That is the fastest way you will become loving. God's love has such a transformative effect on the soul that, that, that nothing can compare to it. Even your very soul will change by the reception of God's love. And at this stage, you don't really understand how much that is going to happen. At this stage, we're still just in the infancy, if we like, of investigating our soul, let alone to investigating the power of God's love. And how does the world see love? Doesn't it see it as some weak, insipid thing that misleads you and makes you go astray? Isn't that basically how the world sees love? And, and yet, what is God's love? God is, God's love is the most powerful force in the universe. It, it, is, it is the framework by which the entire universe exists. Right? So you compare the power of God's love with the, our own internal concepts even of what love really is and you see there's a huge discrepancy. So what I would like to talk to you about is prayer. And I just, I've, only got, I've actually got about 20 minutes to talk to you about prayer. Right? And the question I had to ask myself when I started this was, what can I tell you about prayer that I, that I haven't already told you? And you know what the answer to that is? Not much at all, actually. <laughs> I've spent the last seven, eight years talking to different people about prayer, and in amongst all of those conversations, I've told you so much about prayer already. Prayer and the operation it has upon you. But let's revise a few things about prayer, shall we? What does prayer do to you? Not to God, but to you. Uh, if we go to Rachel and then across to Dame on this side. Opens our soul to the reception of God's love. Right, so it opens our soul. Is that what you're going to say, Dame, pretty much? Was yeah, it is. Yeah. What were you going to say? Yeah, that was it. Exactly yeah. that. So it opens our soul. Now, how, how does it accomplish this opening of your soul? What, what, what does it do to your soul that causes it to just become open now, what, this, this aspect of prayer? Right? If we come to Sue. It 
it enables me to feel my own love and to a degree my whatever humility I have. Well, see, I, I don't feel that's what prayer does, actually. I feel prayer opens you to God's love, right? And there's some reasons why it does that are completely independent, but, but that are a part of your very design, the, the design of your actual soul. So, so what does it do? What does this prayer accomplish? So if we were going to go, let's go across to Sherry and over to Cecilia. Well, it opens us to feeling our emotions. And well, yes, but I've got to stop that again. It does open you to feeling your emotions, but that, you can feel every single emotion you've ever felt and you will still not receive God's love. That's a fact. Does it connect us to our desire? It does. Now, what does that do? What does desire do? If we go across to Cecily. Uh, I, I wanted to say it confronts a lot of false beliefs that I have. It does, but you can confront every single false belief in your soul and you still won't receive God's love. <laughs> okay? So let's go back to Kerry and down to is it Raj. Do you have your hand up? So Raj. Opens us to truth, God's truth. It does, but you can receive every single truth there is possible and you still won't receive God's love. Does it invite God in? Yes, how does it invite God in? This is what it does, it invites God in. It's what? an how? open invitation from me to God Yes. to enter my being, enter yes. my soul. Yes, so God, for part of God, part of God's very nature, love, mm -hmm. will enter your soul. And prayer is the, is, the, is the feeling, the feeling of desire and passion for it to enter you opens your heart to receive the feeling. Do you understand? And you do, it doesn't matter how much truth you deal with, you will not feel it. It doesn't matter how many addictions you deal with, you will not feel it. It doesn't matter how many, how many you know, things you mention about feeling the adult facade, feeling the hurt child, feeling, you won't feel it. You know why? Because unless the passionate desire to receive God's love is present in your soul, your soul won't be open and you won't receive it. Now, this week, we've tried to help you with all of the reasons why you don't have a passionate desire. <laughs> Does that make sense? And there's, there's literally hundreds of reasons inside of any person as to why they don't have passionate desires. A lot of it's about their addictions and their facade, and a lot of it's about their hurt that they have and their lack of trust, lack of faith, lack of use of their will. They have no faith in God, no faith in themselves, no faith in being overwhelmed. All these different things we mentioned are all the reason why you don't have a passionate desire. But to be honest with you, once you've also dealt with all of those reasons, it doesn't guarantee you're ever going to have a passionate desire for God's love. Right? Because a passionate desire for God's love must be something that you feel in your very heart. It's got to be something that you want with all of your being and nature. Right? And sure, all of those things we've dealt with this week help you get through all of the reasons why you don't have this passionate desire for God in your heart. But in the end, even after you deal with all of these different things, which will help you clear away all of the debris and all of the crap that's inside of us that causes us to not have a passionate desire, it doesn't guarantee that you'll have a passionate desire. The passionate desire is an exercise or function of two primary things. One is your faith in God and God's nature, and two is your will to receive. Your, the exercise of your desire to receive. And sure, all the things we've discussed over the last eight days will help you exercise a desire and will help you build faith and will help you get rid of all the reasons why you don't have those things, which are all going to be part of your growth towards God. But in the end, it will not guarantee that you will receive God's love. The only way you can guarantee to receive God's love 
is by having prayer. Prayer is your only way you can guarantee receiving God's love. And what is prayer? It is a sincere, passionate longing for it. Do do you see? That's what prayer is. So let's define prayer. It is a sincere, passionate, longing directed towards God to receive God's love. So while everything that we have discussed with you this week will help you, because everything we've discussed this week are the reasons why you don't have one of these things called a sincere, passionate longing. Right? Even after those things have been done, it doesn't guarantee that you'll have a sincere, passionate longing. Because a sincere, passionate longing is an exercise of your desire and will, your passion that's within your soul, desire or will, to actually begin this interaction with God. Now, maybe to help you understand that, we can, uh, we can reflect upon a relationship with a person. So it, let's say I want a relationship with Mary. Let's say, let's say there's a possibility that we could have a relationship, right? So there's Mary over there and I'm here. G'day, darling. And, and we've got this possibility of having a relationship, right? Let's say I deal with all of my addictions, Is there still a possibility of having a relationship? Yes, probably a better possibility, right? I've gotten rid of... But does it mean I will be a guaranteed relationship with her? No, it doesn't, does it? And let's say I I go go then and deal with all of my hurt. And then I come back to and and I look at Mary and I start to think, I want to have a relationship with her. Is, Is it still a guarantee? that I'm going to have a relationship with her? No. I've dealt with my hurt. It's going to improve my chances, but it still doesn't guarantee I'm going to have a relationship with her. And then let's say I forgive all the people I need to forgive and repent towards all the people I need to repent towards. And then come running back to try and have this relationship. Does this guarantee that I'm still going to have a relationship with Mary? No, it doesn't. It might help my chances again, mightn't it? I'll have improved quite substantially after this point in time in terms of my character, my nature, you know, all of the crap that comes out of me will all be gone and yet it still doesn't guarantee that I'm going to have a relationship with Mary. So the question then becomes, how do I start this relationship with Mary? It requires a number of things on Mary's part and a number of things on mine, doesn't it? What does it require on Mary's part? What does it require? If we, if we have the mics, so Deidre? Uh, Mary has to want to have a relationship. Yes, she does. Now let's say I just replace Mary with God. Now Mary won't like that analogy, but that's the way it goes. Mm-hmm. Let's say I'm replacing Mary with God. Does God want to have a relationship with you? Are you sure? <laughs> well, most, a lot of you aren't sure. Right, because you think God's punishing. You know, what kind of relationship does God want? You know, like I'm a bit worried about that. You know, maybe God wants to take over my will. You know, like the Christians will believe or whatever. Maybe God wants to manipulate my life for the rest of my life, and I, I know I'm going to be some kind of robot doing all these things that God wants me to do. Maybe it's like that. This is what some of our beliefs are. But but down, the truth is the actual undeniable truth from from a person's. Uh, perspective who knows and has had this relationship is that God does want a relationship with me and God wants a personal relationship with you. It's a pretty amazing thing actually. The, the greatest being in the universe wants a personal relationship with you and doesn't want any go-between. Like if I wanted a personal relationship with Mary, would I go, okay, I think the way I'm going to get a personal relationship with Mary is have a relationship with Suzanne. 
And, and, and somehow my relationship with Suzanne is going to make, improve my chances with Mary. Do you think that's the case? I don't think so. I'm just having a relationship with Suzanne. I'm not having one with Mary. Right? So, so firstly, God does want the relationship with me directly without any intercessor, without any mediator, without any go-between with you directly. God wants a relationship with you without any of those things. Right? So as far as the whole setup of a relationship goes from God's perspective, God's already doing everything God possibly can in order to have a relationship with you. <clears throat> God's already doing it. There's not a single thing that God isn't attempting to do with you in order to get a relationship with you. And that applies to the person who's the darkest, evilest person on the planet and whoever is the nicest, not loveliest person. It doesn't make any difference. God is doing the same amount of things or attempting to in order to have the relationship get established. Does that make sense? But then we come to the other half of the equation. So we've established that I am never going to have a relationship with Mary if Mary doesn't want a relationship. Right? But I'm saying in, the, in our case with God, God does want the relationship. So what's causing me to not have one? It's pretty obvious, isn't it? It must be something about me, something I feel that causes me to not engage this relationship with passion and desire. And that's what I'd like you to think about over the coming months. What are the things within you that cause you to not have a passionate desire to engage this relationship that God is already doing everything in God's power to do without breaking your will or without breaking the laws of love? God is already doing everything that God can do to establish this relationship with you. And what is it inside of you that prevents that relationship? Well, the main thing that prevents a relationship is the lack of sincere, passionate longing to receive God's love. In other words, the main thing that prevents the relationship is the lack of prayer. That's the main thing that prevents your relationship right now. So while I must agree that, that not having your will developed prevents a relationship and not having the you know, faith prevents your relationship and not having the, the um, you know, still having addictions prevents the relationship, not wanting to feel yourself prevents the relationship, not wanting to address the issues of who you really are prevents the relationship, not wanting to feel your addictions prevents the relationship, but the biggest possible thing that prevents the relationship is none of those things. It is your lack of prayer, your lack of a sincere, passionate longing for God. So now we come to your homework, because that's the end of my talk. So what's your homework? Develop a sincere, passionate longing to connect with God. That's your homework. In other words, every day, and Mary's gone through, if you were really using your will, what would you do? Every day. You, you wouldn't do it, you know, Saturday morning, have a prayer to God, five minutes, and then wait till next Wednesday afternoon to do it, would you? It would be something that you're beginning to engage every moment of your life. In fact, your soul-based longings can be present even while you're doing other things. So you can be talking in front of a crowd and still have a soul-based longing for God. You can be home doing something else and have a soul-based longing for God. You can be eating, having a soul-based longing for God. And there's the prayer. And once the prayer is engaged, at some point, whenever you become sincere you will receive some of this love. And once you receive some, 
you will then understand what the sincerity was that was required. Yep. Yeah. If we go, Karen. Do I not first have to have um, an emotional experience where I let go of some of my previous concepts of what God is like so that I've got an inkling of uh, the fact that God is loving? Of course. That's how you, one of the ways you're going to develop a sincere, passionate desire. While you hold on to your false beliefs about God, do you think you're going to have a sincere desire for God? Of course not. No. So I agree, you are. So your homework was develop a sincere, passionate desire for God. That's going to involve yeah, letting go all of these false concepts. So remember Mary said, what kind of spiritual food are you nourishing yourself on over the next few months? Get rid of all of, this, all of the stuff that you read about, about, you know, when I say get rid of it all, get rid of all the stuff that you, is superfluous in your life where you read this in the newspaper and all those other things and replace it instead with knowledge about God, the actual truth about God, and allow yourself to feel what the actual truth about God may be. Um, so that can be just developing an awareness of the positive attributes of God that I haven't already got false beliefs about. Do you get what I mean? Yeah, I understand what you mean. Can I just, even your question is flawed with, with all sorts of errors. When you ask for the positive attributes of God, that implies God has negative attributes. God doesn't have any negative attributes. So can we just call it the attributes of God, all of which are positive? I guess what I meant is that I, I don't think I've ever been, I don't think there is in me a disbelief in the beauty that of the physical creations of God, so it's easy for me to connect to God in through the physical them. Yeah, so sit in front of the beauty and then feel God in that matter. In, like there's things you definitely can do in that regard. I agree. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Don't avoid doing those. That's a part of developing this sincere, passionate longing. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah, you got to get away from your head a bit, though, Karen. Like, this is a problem that many of us have. Sincere, passionate longing comes from our emotional self, right? So we're going to have to, in the process of developing prayer, which is developing a sincere, passionate longing that exists within your soul, in, which is prayer, isn't it? We're going to, so if we're ever going to pray properly, we're going to have to have our heart involved. We are. And whatever gets your heart involved with God, I'd be tempted to do that. You know, I'd be tempted to take, take actions to do that. Of course, for most of us, we're distracted here, distracted there, distracted everywhere else, and we don't give much time for, for our heart to be involved with God in the process. But you can get to the point where your heart is involved with God almost all day, every day. And at the moment where it's really sincere and passionate, you will receive some God's love in that moment. And when you do, you might get a bit overwhelmed, you get a bit teary, you start crying, and then you shut down your emotion. This is what many of you do, shut down the emotion, and then you go, ah, oh, there it is. I'm not really passionate yet. I'm shutting down my emotion. So there's a, that I need to, de to develop my sincere, passionate longing. I need to let myself be more emotionally expressive. So I, I look at you looking at me, <laughs> and, and a lot of you and not engaged with your face. So there's all this stuff going on inside, right? And your face doesn't show what's inside. You know why that is? Because you're not fully engaged with your soul. Because if you were, you'd be you know, happy when you're happy. You'd be sad when you're sad. You'd be, you, you'd be engaged in the process even of learning. I don't know if you've watched Mary or myself when Mary's speaking or Mary when I'm speaking. Right? You see a person whose face does all sorts of things. You know, I don't know. If, it's very, it's very hard to ignore what Mary's feeling. You can see it on her face every time. And if she's upset with something I just said, you'll see she's upset. And, and if she, and if she feels happy with what I said, she goes, you know, she'll be happy, right? <laughs> and I'm the same. If you watch me, like you, you can see what's going on. You know, you saw me up there behind the camera, and the signs are going. <laughs> what am I feeling, right? 
Now, this is what you need to do. You need to connect with these passionate emotions about God. This is what is a part of your sincerity. Prayer is the sincere, passionate longing for God. So it's not like blah, 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 to God. It's not like you doing a whole heap of intellectual words to God, although it may help you connect to your sincere, passionate longing if you say some words to God. Right? However, it is a feeling you're going to have to generate within yourself through the exercise of your will. And that's how you receive love. And when you receive love, it will transform you and it will make it much easier for you to love. You receive some of God's love, that's very, very different than, than trying to develop your own. You see, all the advice we've given you this week is about developing your will to want to be more loving people, right? and showing you where your will isn't engaged. But to be honest with you, if you develop your will and you start walking away through all of these things, and you start developing a sincere, passionate longing to receive God's love, what will happen is many of these things will be automatically engaged. Like, How do you think I learnt to do all of these things? Because somebody taught me how. Right? And that person taught me by me being open to receive love and then I got taught of how to look at my addictions, how to look at my facade, how to honestly examine myself, how to see, oh, there's my real self, my, all these self, parts of myself, where, how to look after them and nurture them and care for them and how to forgive and how to repent. All these things God taught me because I received some of God's love and when, my, when I received some of God's love, God's love teaches me how to do these things. So what I learned was my most important task is to remove from myself any impediment to the reception of God's love, which means to remove from myself any impediment to prayer. Remove from myself any impediment to a sincere, passionate longing to receive love from God. That becomes your focus. If that becomes your focus, you'll meet your soulmate and it won't matter whoever she is, whatever she is, it won't matter where she is. You will not be shaken from this relationship with God. At the moment, if, if, if you, many of you who are in partnerships, if your wife left seeking God, you would too. Because you're more interested in getting a relationship with your wife than you are with God or your husband than you are with God. Huh? That's the fact. We need to change that. We need to change that by developing this sincere longing for God. So what I would like to encourage you to do is to do all of the things that we've encouraged you this week because they are all important parts of helping deconstruct all of the layers and layers of stuff that's over the top of your true passionate desire and also correcting the direction of your desires and passions. But understand, even after you've done all of that, it doesn't guarantee your relationship with God. A relationship with God can only be guaranteed through prayer. And so unless you choose to pray, no relationship with God will be possible. And unless you choose to pray, you will not receive God's love. It doesn't matter how much you become a loving person. I, I know people in the sixth sphere of the spirit world, very loving people, much more loving than you are, I can tell you. And, and you know, if you sat in their presence, you would feel like overwhelmed by their love. But they still have no relationship with God. They still haven't received God's love because they don't and have not engaged prayer. Does that make sense? So what I would like to see all people who hear about divine truth do is engage prayer. And if you were, as, when you were listening to Mary, you would do it trying to do more, wouldn't you? You'd, you'd do it all the time, repetitively. 
You'd learn as much as you could about it. You'd read things about it. You'd do things about it if you really wanted this relationship. And if you don't really want this relationship, be honest. Say, I don't really want this relationship yet. And yet I know that if I can get this relationship established, it can be have the greatest impact on my life or at least think that it might be possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to learn about all the reasons why I don't want the relationship. That would be more positive than just ignoring it altogether. So what we'd like to encourage you over the coming months is to engage prayer. And if you can't engage it, because remember, it by definition is sincere, and it by definition is passionate, it by definition is a longing of the soul, if you can't engage it, try first to examine all the reasons why you can't and undo those reasons. Because they are the reasons that will, they are the things that will help your relationship with God the most. So many of you in the past have been engaging things like to solve relationship problems with each other or to you know, deal with certain things that you notice are faults with yourself. But, but my focus would be focus on the things that cause a problem, a fracture between your relationship with God, you and God. Do them first. Focus on them first. Because as you receive God's love, these other things will sort themselves out if you still contain this desire for sincerity. The other things will automatically be exposed through this relationship with God. So do you think you might be able to try that? Yeah. So that's what I'd like to leave you with, given that a stab. Yeah? Well, that brings us to our... End of our session together, our, our last week. How do you feel? It's been good? Been good for you? Good, eh? How do you feel? A bit overwhelmed? <laughs> How do you feel? A bit uh, confronted with your life? Yeah. These are all the things that it's okay to feel. But maybe if we have a few comments, we've only got a few. Well, I, I, I'm already a bit over time. So... Paul? Oh, no, heaps motivated and inspired. It's a lovely note to end on. Yeah, Thank that's you. Great. Yeah, that's great. And yourself, Joy? Um, yeah, I do feel much clearer. I can see more clearly where I've been going off track Yeah. and see more clearly, you know, what there is to do. And there's lots of it. Yeah. Um, and that's okay. And I love what you finished on because it's kind of like what first? Well... If this goes first, then everything else make, is so much yeah, easier. You make this first, everything else will come together. If you remember it, everything else yeah. will come together. It's been really, really lovely. It's just been a huge, huge gift, and I really feel grateful to have been here, and thank you. All right. It's our pleasure. Very much. Yeah. yeah thanks, guys. <laughs> So I'd like to I'd like to thank Corny and Mary for their <laughs> and I've, I've spent a lot of time worrying about the material that I've wanted to present to you <laughs> and had to work through some of those issues and and also has spent a lot of time feeling about their own progress in terms of how, how what they can teach you from their own progress so far. And I've had a lot of time in self-reflection, so I'd like to thank you guys for, for your efforts involved with all of those things. Can Pam, I, go on. No, it's all right. You, you want to say? Well, I'd really like to thank... I know we, we would both like to thank Lena and Igor. Well, that's where I was going. Yeah, then, so, sorry. Yeah. But I would really, really like to acknowledge Jesus and all of the incredible work that he has done to put this together. He has been going on this for months. He started with ordering equipment putting equipment together, learning how to use the equipment, training the guys how to use the equipment, then um, just coaching me through all of the issues with the bookings and the venue, 
And then coaching Courtney and I, helping us so much with our content, how to give a good presentation, our personal issues, as well as doing all his own presentations. And then literally packing the van, literally driving it down here, like just every little minute thing. He, two of the recipes that you've eaten come directly from him. But they like, weren't done very well. <laughs> no, <laughs> not to his recipe. But yeah. I just, anything that you've encountered this week, from your bedroom to what happened up here and all of the equipment that came together to do it has its roots with this man and along with the incredible inspiration. So I just... Thank you. <laughs> Just don't make a big deal about it. <laughs> um, we'd like to thank Lena and Igor. They've had a lot of effort in place. And by the way, their effort isn't finished with the sessions. As I've said to you, um, there will be, after the two sets of sessions, there's going to be a good 160 hours of work to do. Two won't switch. Um, so that's a lot of work. <laughs> so we'd like to thank them both. It, it, Igor's right up the back there, being hiding behind the thing. He's not hiding, but he's just got to be there, so otherwise I don't get any shot. And then uh, Lena down here. They've been doing so many things this week to try and get a recording of all of this material and back up the data and all of these different things. So we'd really like to thank you guys for... <laughs> It's their wedding anniversary today as well. It's their anniversary today too. They've been married know. 11 years. <laughs> Sorry about that. And uh, if you'd like to th give your thanks to the staff here, then remember there's the box at the back where you can do that as well. And there's a box at the back where you can give Corny your thanks, or uh, if you want to do it financially, that is. And, and also um, Lena and Igor, your thanks as well. So. We'd like to just remind you and thank you for your donations to us. All of us would love to thank you thank for you. your donations yes, to us. Yes, very too. much. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So we are really looking forward to seeing what happens to you. <laughs> yeah. And we know that some of you may have felt initially pretty confronted by some of the things that have been said and, oh, yeah. and, so, forth and, and, and so forth. But we also feel that if you really sincere about your progress, I think you will find this week we've spent together to be very, very beneficial. Just a few little practical things, and the meal tonight is uh, now. <laughs> it actually was seven minutes ago, to be honest. <laughs> That's the way it goes. Uh, we'll finish in a sec. And the uh, meal tomorrow morning is at 8.30, so that it's a bit earlier, so that for some of you who want to leave earlier or whatever, you have it. We didn't want to make it too early, Otherwise, the staff have to get up at you know, 4 o'clock in the morning to get it all ready. But, so we've made it at 8.30. For those of you who, um, if, if any of you are going to leave before then, please let us know so we can let the staff know to cook a little bit less. That would be great. OK, guys, well, it's been great spending a bit of time with you again. And hopefully you've enjoyed each other's company, have you? Yeah? Got to know each other better and so forth. We have another group like this uh, in six days' time, so it'll be interesting to see how that group goes, a very different complexion in, to each group, and so we'll be interested to see how that group goes. Both groups uh, will be placed on the internet, so if you want to see how the next group goes, you can watch their presentations instead of yours. <laughs> you go, wow, Jesus, Mary and, and Cornelius did a better job then. What's going on with that? <laughs> Maybe, maybe they favour that group. Yeah? So, I don't know. <laughs> okay. But we'd like to thank you for your time and also for your participation. Like, we've been really, really glad to see the warming up of your participation and so much so that many, like, through your, throughout the last few days in particular, you've been very engaged and very, very much personally involved. In the, in the participation with the group, and we'd like to thank you for that. That's, that's been really good. If, if, to be honest, if we didn't have that, we'd be going, hmm, maybe these things are not such a good idea, right? We do not uh, envisage ourselves doing another one uh, of these, um, and that applies uh, around the world even, potentially. 
Uh, we may do some similar things in a, with, similar sub, with, with a different set of subjects, but probably not this kind of uh, event that we personally organise because it has taken a large amount of our time to organise and we, f we do feel that we're better off spending our time trying to deliver more truth rather than doing a lot of very uh, mundane work-related things that, uh, that, that really take us sometimes away from the core things that we're trying to achieve. So, so we don't know if we'll do this again. So it's been a great opportunity. It might be a once-off opportunity. And so I um, hope that you've enjoyed that opportunity. Yeah. Well, we better get to our meal because it's been lovingly prepared for us, and we're a bit. Um, well, have we got music time? Oh, there's a. Ca we want to take a picture of you out the back. Is that all right? Now, do we want to do that after dinner, or be well, it's probably more loving to our staff that we do it after dinner. Um, so we might say at maybe quarter past or half past five. Could we all gather out here, and Igor's going to get you and just get you all to put a grin on your face, even if you don't feel like it? We might do it. We might do it right here. In, we'll move this and we'll do it in front of this because then we've got the lighting. Oh, yeah, true. That yep. might be better. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll do it here. And uh, if we can do that at half past five. Does that sound all right with everyone? Yep. Now, after that, um, we're not certain yet what we're going to do um, because we have nothing planned, to be honest, after that. So who knows what will happen? It, it just depends on some feelings or whatever that needs to be felt. But at this stage, I don't have a strong desire to do anything other than what we've already done. We're, we're, all of us, Mary, myself and, and Corny, have obviously spent a lot of time doing these things and, and obviously you know, we feel that hopefully it's been of some benefit to you. And, uh, and, but, but we've spent a lot of energy doing it too. So we've, we're not sure what we'll do tonight. Can we leave it like that? Yes. Okay. We'll let you know when we know. <laughs> Have a good lunch, guys. Thank you.